<laughs> so uh, I believe anxiety rings are pieces of jewelry that people wear and the idea is to kind of touch the jewelry at times when they're feeling anxious and to try to distract themselves from the sense of anxiety. It's not something that we personally kind of recommend within the clinic and we wouldn't advocate. And the reason for that is that generally we find distraction doesn't really work with anxiety. If you've got something you're scared of and you're desperately trying to take your mind off it, usually you'll still be aware that that's what you're worrying about. And so distraction techniques often have a paradoxical effect that you end up noticing more of the things you're trying to distract yourself from. We were given the opportunity to ask clinical psychologist Blake Stoby. My name is Blake Stoby. Some of the most Googled questions on anxiety. Here's what he had to say. Anxiety is really common and a lot of people experience it and usually we perceive it as a like, felt sense of being scared about something and it becomes an anxiety disorder if it persists or really kind of disrupts a person's life. So people can experience anxiety in lots of different ways and it can be really idiosyncratic to the person, have lots of thoughts that kind of make them feel very scared or like give them a sense of threat, or they might have physical sensations of anxiety like tingling, uh, butterflies in their stomach, their throat feeling tight, heart racing, um, or they might kind of experience it on an emotional level, kind of feeling a sort of fear within themselves. So some people will get waves of anxiety, some people have anxiety on a very high level for quite a constant period of time. And physically the things that people notice are very different from person to person and depends on the anxiety problem that they have. I think high functioning anxiety refers to it when people are extremely anxious but able to do really well in their relationships and in their work lives. It's not really a term that we tend to use within the clinic because a lot of people that we see are managing to work or um, maintain their relationships, but they're still really, really anxious. So we wouldn't kind of tend to differentiate anxiety from high functioning anxiety. Um, a lot of people have anxiety and manage to function. Um, I don't know about any tests for high functioning anxiety, because as, as I said, within our clinic, we don't tend to kind of look for that or make that differentiation. In terms of anxiety, there are a number of different tests that you can use. So some that will measure just how anxious you are generally. And then you can also have specific tests depending on the anxiety problem that you have. So there's certain sort of questionnaires that you can have that are designed around um, panic or OCD or PTSD that will give a very specific measure of how that anxiety problem is affecting you. There's also unfortunately a lot of misinformation out there and a lot of badly designed questionnaires or questionnaires that have just been made up that you should interpret or kind of look at with a fair bit of caution. I mean, I tell you, if, if you think you have anxiety, then yes, it's a really good idea to have a chat with your GP and to discuss it there. And obviously people will kind of look stuff up on the internet and kind of Google it. That, that's totally understandable. I would just urge a bit of caution with that because there's a lot of misinformation and sometimes just because you score high on a test doesn't necessarily mean that that thing applies to you or that the test is necessarily very good. So CBT techniques for anxiety, uh, these are many and varied and probably the best thing I would say you could do would be to find a good therapist to help you to apply these techniques. Um, one of the main reasons that I have a job <clears throat> is that anxiety problems are really sneaky and they trick people into doing things that seem to make uh, sense but when, which may actually kind of maintain the anxiety problems. So for example, um, if you go skiing and the first time you go skiing, it's really, really scary. What you might find yourself doing is kind of leaning backwards away from the valley in front of you and towards the mountain. And the intention is to try to keep you safe. And in fact, it has exactly the opposite effect. It makes you much more off balance and much more wobbly and likely to fall off your skis. So anxiety problems sort of trick people into doing things that kind of make common sense but which might actually just keep the anxiety problem going. And a lot of this stuff is really isn't particularly common sense. It seems counterintuitive. So a lot of techniques are really about helping people to understand what they're worried about and then to kind of test that out and to see whether the things they're doing are kind of helping or maintaining the anxiety problems. Most people have just put anxiety disorder NHS. <laughs> yeah. So in terms of like anxiety problems, often for many people, the first port of call um, will be to go and speak to your GP. 
and to have a chat about what's happening. And people can also self-refer into NHS um, therapy services as well. Um, and often that's under the increase in access to psychological therapies, so that's abbreviated to IAPT. So if you, if you search for uh, the area that you live in and then followed by IAPT, you should be able to find a link in form to be able to access some therapy for anxiety or depression, psychological therapies. Um, the other uh, treatment that's available through the NHS is medication as well, which might be really appropriate for some people too. And again, usually you should chat to your GP about that. So the only thing I would kind of add to this is really that this, the thing that interests me most about anxiety is like a lot of things that are common sense and that you would think be helpful for anxiety often are not. And so that's, again, I kind of urge caution if you're sort of reading things on the internet that sort of advise you to breathe into a brown paper bag uh, or stand on one foot or distract yourself. Um, a lot of these things are going to be either made up and or not particularly helpful. So just to be slightly kind of skeptical about that and really sort of look for reputable sources of information.